Hey there, welcome to this video. My name is Jan Suiderduin, founder of LearnSolidWorks.com. And today in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to model this beautiful tree file knot in SolidWorks. And I know it looks very complex, but you will be surprised how easy it is to model the shape in SolidWorks. So we're going to start with this red body right here, and then we're going to model the support foot right here. Now, if you look closely to this main body right here, you can see that those mid sections of the shape are straight beams. So we're going to start this lesson by modeling one of those beams, and then we're going to copy and rotate those beams, and then we're going to use the loft feature in order to create those curved shapes right here. So let's get started by opening a new part. All right, so we're going to create a new part. So open a new part and make sure that the units are set to millimeters. Now we're going to start this lesson by making a new sketch on the front plane. So select the front plane in the feature tree and click at the 2D sketch icon. Now we're going to create a new corner rectangle. So select the corner rectangle icon right here. And we're going to draw a corner rectangle starting at the origin up till here. Now we're going to make sure that this corner rectangle is set to for construction because this will only be a construction line. Now I want to make sure that both sides of the corner rectangle have the same length. So I'm going to select those two lines by holding down the control key and click it make equal. Now I'm going to apply a smart dimension in order to set the height. And we're going to make sure that the height will be set to 15 millimeters. Now I'm going to draw a second corner rectangle starting at the upper right end point right here till here and I'm going to make sure that the length of those two lines is equal as well. And we can also going to apply a smart dimension to this line so select this line and make sure that the length is set to 12 millimeters. This looks good. Now you might be wondering why I'm first drawing a rectangle with construction lines but I will explain this to you in a minute. And now we can create a first extruded boss base. So click at the extruded boss base button and we're going to make sure to set the depth to 30 millimeters and we're going to make sure to set direction 1 to mid plane. And this will give us an extrude in both directions. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy and move and copy this body right here. So select this body, we're going to make sure to rotate this body along the origin in the feature tree. So select the origin in the feature tree and we're going to make sure to rotate this body minus 90 degrees in the X direction and 90 degrees in the Y direction. We also going to make sure to set the number of instances to two and make sure that copy is enabled right here. Now click OK. And now we have copied our body two times in two different directions. And now you can also see why I created a center line rectangle first. That's because I wanted to keep some distance between the origin and the geometry. Because otherwise these three solids would overlap with each other. And by applying the center line rectangle, I created some distance between the origin and the bodies. I hope this makes sense. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place a point at the center of a surface. Now click at reference geometry and click at the point command. And now we're going to select this face right here and we're going to make sure to set it to center of face and click OK. All right, now we're going to make another point on surface. So click at the point command again. And this time we're going to select this face right here and click OK. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 3D sketch. So click at the 3D sketch icon and we're going to draw a style spline. Starting at this first point right here. Now we're going to make sure that the second point is somewhere around here. The third point is around here. The fourth point is around here. The fifth point is around here. And the last point will be point two. So select point two right here. All right, now we've created uh, our style spline. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to define the angles. So I'm going to select this face right here. Hold down your control key and select the first center line and we're going to apply a perpendicular relation. Now we're going to do the same thing for the center line right here. So select the face, select the center line and click at make perpendicular. 
all right now we're going to make sure that this center line will be set to make along x and we're going to make sure that this center line will be set to make along z just like that this looks good and now we can make sure that those lines right here all have the same length so select them all by holding down your control key and click it make equal and now we know for sure that those four lines have the same length so if i'm now going to apply a smart dimension to one of those lines and i make the length 50 millimeters you can see that all my lines are now 50 millimeters and that the sketch is fully defined because it turns black all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide our points all right and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a lofted boss base so click at the lofted boss base option and now we're going to set the profiles we're going to select this face right here and this face right here all right now we're going to click at the center line parameter box and we're going to select our newly created 3d sketch right here all right now we're also going to add some start and end constraints and make sure that the start constraint is set to normal to profile and we're going to switch the direction because we want to make sure that our pink arrow is pointing in the right direction and now we're going to do the same thing for the end constraint right here so also set this one to normal to profile and flip the direction now we're going to disable the merge result because i want to make sure this will be a separate body now click ok and now we have created the first loft now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy and rotate this loft just like we did with the previous bodies. So therefore we're going to select our bod a loft body and we're going to rotate this body along the origin again. So click at rotate. We're going to select the origin in the feature tree and we're going to make sure to rotate this body, this loft body in minus 90 degrees in the X direction and 90 degrees in the Y direction. We're going to make sure that the number of instances is set to two and we're going to make sure to enable the copy option. And as you can already see in the preview, this will look pretty good. So now click OK. And now we have created the base of our knot. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to combine all those features. So click at the combine option. We're going to select each of those bodies right here. And we're going to make sure that the operation type is set to add. Now click OK. And now we have created our knot body. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some fillets. So click at the fillet command. We're going to make sure that the radius is set to 3 millimeters and the profile is set to curvature continuous. And this will give us a very nice fillet. Now click OK. All right, this looks pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to rotate our entire geometry. So we're going to click at the move slash copies body option. We're going to select our body and we're going to rotate our body along the origin again. And this time we're going to make sure to disable the copy option because I only want to rotate the body. I don't want to copy it. And we're going to make sure to rotate this body minus 45 degrees in the X direction. Just like that. And now click OK. All right, this looks pretty good. So now we have created this shape right here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to model this support foot right here. And therefore we're going to create a new sketch on the top plane. So select the top plane, click at the 2D sketch icon. And now we're going to create a circle at the origin right here. So draw a circle and we're going to make sure that the diameter of the circle will be set to five millimeters. So type in five millimeters and click OK. Now we're going to create an extrude. So click at extruded boss base and we're going to make sure to set the front box to offset and we're going to change the offset distance into 80 millimeters and we're going to reverse the offset. And this way we can create a, a body right here. Now we're going to set the direction one to blind and the depth to 20 millimeters and we're going to disable the merge result to make this an individual body all right now we're going to create a new sketch on the surface right here so select the surface click at the 2d sketch icon and now we're going to draw a big circle right here 
So we're going to start the circle at the origin again. Now we're going to apply a smart dimension again. And we're going to make sure that this circle has a diameter of 60 millimeters. All right, now we're going to create a new extruded pulse base again. So click at extruded pulse base. We're going to make sure to set direction one to blind and the depth to five millimeters. And we want to merge this body only to the cylinder above our body. So we're going to deselect all bodies. We're going to click at selected bodies right here and we're only going to select this green body right here. Now click OK. And now our body is merged only with that model that right there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a fillet to this edge right here. So click at the fillet command and we're going to make sure to set this to an asymmetric fillet. And we're going to make sure the distance 2 is set to 15 millimeters and distance 1 is set to 25 millimeters. And make sure that the profile is set to curvature continuous. Now click OK and now you've created a beautiful fillet. Now we're also going to create a fillet on the outer edge right here. So select this surface right here, make sure that the radius is set to 1.5 millimeters and click OK. All right. Now, as you may know, our knot is now intersecting with our foot body. So therefore, we need to create a hole in our knot body to make sure that our foot is not intersecting with the knot anymore. And therefore, we're going to use the indent feature. So we're going to click at the search bar right here and going to type in indent. So select the indent feature and a target body will be our knot body right here. Now make sure that set to keep selections and the two body region will be this body right here. Now make sure to set it to cut and this way there will be a hole cutted into our target body. So if we're now going to isolate our knot body, you can see that we've just created a hole into this body so that our bodies are not intersecting with each other anymore. All right, very nice. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some materials to our bodies. So I'm going to select uh, wood, for example, but of course you can choose any material you like. So in this case, I'm going to choose a uh, furnished ash wood. We're going to adjust the mapping a little bit. So we're going to click at the mapping size right here in order to get a better mapping and click OK. All right, pretty good. Now we're also going to apply a material to this body right here. So select this body. We're going to click at the appearances and let's apply a steel material, for example. So let's select the set and finish stainless steel. This looks pretty nice. Now we can hide this folder. We can, of course, also adjust our scene a bit. So I'm going to click at the basic scenes and I'm going to click at the backdrop scene right here. We're going to enable our render tools and we can now edit our scene. Make sure that the background is set to white. Now we can also turn on our shadows and turn off our shaded with edges. And here you can see the finalized result. We can also turn on the perspective if we want. And this is our completed model. All right, guys, that's all for this video. Now, if you like this video, I want to ask you to give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also make sure to visit learnsolidworks.com. And on my website, you will find many more SolidWorks product modeling tutorials. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.